Well, hello. Uh, my name is Mary Means, and you might have seen me out front a while ago. I was actually helping with registrations because at the Noble <coughs> Foundation, I'm actually an event and hospitality manager. But today, I'm going to talk to you about beekeeping. And I'm going to preface with I am a novice beekeeper, and my passion for beekeeping started about five weeks ago. So I've been fast and furious learning about bees, um, and I just wanted to share what I've learned so far with you about bees, the importance of bees, and just some general information because I have, uh, kind of what Steve was alluding to, I am starting beekeeping as just an enthusiastic hobby. That's why I'm interested, and really it, it kind of dates back because I've had this memory um, often that I've thought of through the years, and it's my mother actually kept bees when I was like three or four, and I have memories of her smoking her bees, and so you might think this is me in the bee hat, but this is actually my mom, and um, so I'd always had that thought in the back of my mind, and it was, you know, it was after New Year's, and I was cold, and I was stuck inside, and I just thought, I need something to do. I need a new hobby, and so I just thought this memory came back to my, to my mind. And I just thought maybe bees is something I want to check out. So I'd gone to Steve and uh, Steve said, well, why don't you just get some research on it? We don't have a lot of materials here at Noble yet about bees. So I just went to the Ardmore Public Library to get my start. This was literally about five weeks ago. And at the public library, I checked out two books. That was a Thursday after work. I went and by the end of the weekend, I had read both these books. And that speaks a lot for me. I'm, about 99% of what I read is fiction, okay? It's got to be sci-fi, something. And to read about an actual topic, I thought, hey, maybe this, this is a hobby that I could actually get into. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys some basics about bees and uh, just to kind of give you some more background information. And both of these books, in fact, almost every book I've read since, all the books start out the same. What's the basics of the bee and the beehive and the bee colony? <laughs> You guys have probably heard these terms all your life, and they get used in everyday language. The queen bee, right? Somebody in this room has probably been accused of being the queen bee before, right? Well, there is only one queen in every hive, and she, um, in a way, rules the roost. And you can tell she is much larger than the other two types of bees. The other type of bee that is most prevalent in the hive is actually the worker bee. There are literally tens of thousands of worker bees in a hive. They do everything. They raise the baby bees, they clean um, the hives, they provide air conditioning in the hives, they'll help cool down the hives when it's too hot. And they're, they're the ones who forage for honey and nectar and bring it back, or forage for pollen and um, nectar, I'm sorry, and, and convert it into honey into the hive. There could be up to 50 or 60,000 bees in one hive, and most of them are all gonna be these worker bees. The third type of bee are the drones. These are the boy bees. Their job is to mate with the queen, and they eat food, that's all they do. Mate and eat, that's, they don't, uh, yeah. <clears throat> it's pretty good life for the drone bee. The, the downside is that is when it comes up to winter, because they have no use, they're, they're shunned, and they're kicked out of the hive, and they are left to die, so. Um, <laughs> Too bad for the drones. <laughs> but the worker bees um, are still there and keep things running. A queen can last amazingly up to five or six years, okay? So, and you can see in this picture right here, the queen is much larger than the worker bees. There's a pretty big size difference. All the bees have a basic same life cycle. The queen lays an egg, and a queen lays up to 3,000 eggs a day which I thought that was crazy. So she is working just as hard as the worker bees. She's laying those eggs. They all start out as an egg, then turn into a larva and eventually a pupa. The worker bees all do the same thing. There's thousands and thousands of born and um, thousands really born potentially every day. They all start out with the same jobs. They are in charge of cleaning the hive, cleaning up exactly where they were born, prepping it for a new baby egg to be laid. Then they help with the, the honey as it's coming into the hive. They help collect it. And uh, so you can see these bees here at the top of the frame. They're working constantly, monitoring the, the frames, cleaning, converting pollen and nectar into honey. And eventually, after about three weeks, the, the bees start to, the worker bees start to venture out to collect the pollen. And what's really cool, um, the, the way they can do this is the bees are covered, in fact, with thousands of little tiny hairs, and it helps attract the pollen when they go visit the flowers. And they have these pollen baskets 
which are on their back hind legs, and they pe can pack that full of, of pollen. So that's what they help to, that, that's their luggage that they carry with them to take it back to the hive. Well, why, why do we care about bees? Well, ultimately, we need them for food production. It's amazing. when I, I just pulled this off the Internet. When I look at the type of crops that, are, um, that need pollination, things like apples and almonds, they're highly, highly, um, they're 100% nearly have to be pollinated by insects. And much of that work is done by bees. So if we want to have, I mean, when you think about going to Walmart or Homeland or any of these stores, if you didn't have honeybees, you wouldn't have half the produce that's there. Um, so I, I think that the, that's really valuable, certainly. I know um, I was a, a backyard um, gardener for the first time two summers ago. It was a lot of fun, got my hands dirty. I remember having grown the watermelons and uh, probably not a good use of space. And I had tons of this beautiful long plant and all these perfectly little flowers on the plant and about two produced a, a watermelon. And at the time I thought, I just don't think they're getting pollinated. I just, where, where are my honeybees? I don't know. Um, well, that problem's gonna be solved this year because I'm gonna have my own honeybees. Well, also in some of my research, I learned that um, really the, the bees are traveled and they follow the harvest. Um, bees are grown and maybe normally stationed in a place like Florida and they'll truck them all the way to California to, and follow the almond harvest or then they'll go up to New England area and follow the orchards up there. And so it's amazing to see that the commercial side of beekeeping to really help in our food production. Some just kind of some cool bee facts. This is a gallon of honey and a gallon weighs about 11 pounds. And to produce one pound of honey, bees must visit two million flowers. So if, if you think about that and do some really quick math, to get that gallon of honey, bees had to visit 22 million flowers to, to produce that. They have been working hard. And so it's pretty cool to think that what they are able to do and what they have been able to accomplish for, for decades. You may have heard a little bit about something called colony collapse disorder. It's actually been kind of a scary thing. Um, you know, it's normal to lose some bees. Every year they die, you know, some disease, and there's things that happen. Well, about 2006, a lot of commercial producers started seeing their hives simply disappear. They couldn't find dead bees. There was, they just kind of disappeared without a trace. They didn't know why, and they've, they've, turned, they've coined this term colony collapse disorder. And it's been a, a real concern because ultimately what happens to our bees if we don't have them to pollinate our crops? We, we're in trouble. They still don't know exactly what caused the CCD, and some people have claimed that it's because of pesticide use. There's other theories out there. I don't, I don't have the hand answer, but I know lots of scientists are really rubbing up into research or trying to discover what's been causing CCD. I guess the good thing for the backyard beekeeper purposes is that mostly all these, the CCD problem has really hit more of the commercial producers and not so much of a, a hobby or backyard beekeeper. So I've learned all about the bees and I was, I was pumped. I was ready to become a beekeeper. So pretty soon I decided, okay, I'm gonna start a backyard beehive. That's my goal. And I think I wanna start with two hives with really the ultimate goal uh, being able to have honey for my friends and my family and have cool Christmas presents for everybody, right? Wanted to get a little bit more information, so I stumbled upon the Oklahoma State Beekeepers Association, and this has been a great resource. They have clubs all across Oklahoma, and I'm actually going to my first beekeeper meeting this Thursday in Duncan. So you may be thinking, well, how do you even start with the beehives? Where, where do I even begin? Well, from what I learned is that the getting of bees, your, your time frame is a pretty small window if you're gonna buy bees. People start in late fall and by about the end of January, that's it. So I was kind of, since I picked up this hobby a whopping five weeks ago, I only had a few weeks to, to really make a decision and, and decide if I was gonna do this and get some bees ordered. So real quick, the different ways to get bees are, first, you could catch them. A swarm. You've probably seen these possibly in pictures. This might scare you if you see a bunch of bees just swarming. Actually, this is when bees are most docile, that they are just looking and scouting for a new home. Uh, they don't recommend new beekeepers to actually try to catch a swarm. But um, oddly enough, through all my adventures, I knew my mom was a beekeeper, but it's been so cool to realize um, about two or three weeks ago, found out my papa used to keep bees. 
and he got his first bees from catching a swarm behind a shop. So um, I think, I always thought he was brave, but I think he's extra brave for having caught a swarm. Besides catching a, a swarm, which of course the price is right, it's free, you could buy um, an entire hive. This is the most expensive option. It's already ready to go. You get the, get the frames, you get the bees, and bees can be transported and set up and ready to go the very next day. So that is an option. That's the most expensive option. And the third option is something called a nuke. If you buy a nuke, and it literally comes in a small box, like the cardboard box, and there's five, four or five frames in there. And it has a combination of brood, which is the baby bees, has honey, and it already has bees and a queen. So it's up and running, foundation is built, and you just put those frames into your eight or 10 frame hive and it's ready to go. The fourth option, which is the option I decided to go with, is something called just a package of bees. A uh, package that comes in a box just like that, and um, it's three pounds of bees. So three pounds is about 10,000 bees. So on April 1st, or the first weekend in April, I've got 20,000 bees that I'm gonna go pick up in Oklahoma City. So that's what I've opted to go with, is two packages of bees. You can get equipment off the internet. There are a couple places locally. I just decided to um, order my bees from beekeeping, et cetera. It's in Oklahoma City. I think actually the bees are from Louisiana though. So a big shipment's going into beekeeping, et cetera, and then they, they're kind of the middleman. And my, all my hives and the equipment is getting delivered uh, this week. And I ended up ordering from Brushy Mountain. Just, I like their website the best, I guess. So, but Dedan, Man Lake, those are some really big names in beekeeping equipment. So the basics for any hive, there are a lot of different styles, but this uh, Lang, I think it's Langsford, is the most popular style. And all the, the hives are mostly the same. The different parts are the hive stand, the bottom board. The hive body is where the bees are mainly housed and where the baby brood are stored. The super is where they, they produce the honey. And either for the honey is for their winter food or they'll make sometimes so much honey that that's the extra that um, we can siphon off and enjoy for human consumption. An inner cover and an outer cover. So you can see boxes is, you know, with one hive body, two, three. It can, just depends on how big the hive is how many more boxes you have to add. So that's what it looks like in a super. I learned some basic tools you need. One thing is called a hive tool. It's like a scraper. It um, helps open up the hive and it helps clean the frames. There's a sticky substance called propolis that bees produce and it's almost like glue. So you have to keep your hives uh, pretty clear of that. Otherwise you could not get anything moved in or out. You also need a smoker. So that's an essential tool and definitely some kind of garment. Bees, uh, like to get in noses and ears, and uh, certainly we don't want to get stung, but uh, they'll, the bees will become unhappy if they get stuck in some crevice, so wearing some kind of protective gear is important. There's so many other tools. There's things like this um, frame grip. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of tools out there, so it just kind of depends on what you need and where you're, you're starting out. I've also read Beekeeping for Dummies. All the books that I have either checked out from the library or I bought some. There's tons of videos online, um, so that's always a great resource. And something else that I missed out this year is that COBA, C-O-B-A, they actually offer a beekeeping class in November, and then they had a second one this year in, in December and January, and I missed out, but um, I know someone who went, and he said it was wonderful. So if you would want some more information, they are offering a pretty in-depth class. So really for me at this point, um, you know, I'm just really counting down the days. I keep talking to my family and my friends about beekeeping and I, I just kind of want to be known as the crazy bee lady. So um, really at this point, my only decision is like what to paint my hive. I don't know, but um, I'm just very excited to start this and um, that's it. So.